Yeah. Wow. To open it. Hi, this is Elizabeth with Live Simple, Live Free. And um, I am on a diet called the Autoimmune Protocol Diet to try to help my body get over some of these autoimmune things that I have. And um, one of the things that they talk about in the auto, Autoimmune Protocol is having very healthy sources of meat, fish, and of fats. And contrary to what's been pushed for so long, um, lard from a healthy animal is not bad for you at all. It's considerably better for somebody um, than something that has been refined and processed um, so much. So uh, Molly and Barry know of a farm not too far from here where they are raising very like clean animals, grass fed, um, no extra stuff, just clean, just the way I'm supposed to find. And so I was able to get some meat from there, which was wonderful. I was able to find heart, which I really do enjoy. And the organ meats like that are supposed to be so good for this diet because they're so incredibly rich in nutrition. Well, I'm doing something I've never done before. Um, I've been you know, using coconut oil uh, as a fat, avocado oil, olive oil. Um, I have been able to buy some like healthy bacon that I can maybe use some bacon fat. Well, this time when I ordered the meat from them, um, I got a slab of just good old basic pork fat. Um, and uh, it's from a very clean animal. There's no extra stuff put in there at all. And I've been doing some research and I am now going to render this into some nice lard that I can use for cooking. And um, whatever's left in there after I finish the process is what they call cracklins and had this wonderful crispy bacony flavor. So one of the first things I'm doing here is I'm cutting these, this slab of, of just really nice um, pork fat um, into um, pieces. I've got my big cleaver here. This is taking a little bit of muscle, but I'm doing fine. It's good for me. So I'm just gonna, it comes in kind of like slabs that come together. Now this is nice and cold. It's easier to work with when it's really cold. Um, and I just need to watch out for any like chunks of meat, which I can go ahead and cut off. Though this has been pretty well cleaned out ahead of time. And I'm just cutting it up into pretty uniform pieces. There we go. All right. And um, then I will be putting this over a very low heat, the lowest heat that I can, and just letting it slowly melt. And as it melts, it will render out um, the lard. And um, I'm learning there's different kinds of fat um, from different parts of the animal. Um, but I, I'm not sure where this part's from, but I think it's just going to make some good basic um, cooking fat, the lard, which uh, is like the world's best thing for pies and stuff like that. Oh my goodness. So once this has very slowly melted, I'm going to give it lots and lots of time. Then I'll take some cheesecloth. Um, I actually have some really nice kitchen, clean kitchen towels that are made out of cheesecloth. And I will um, strain it, and I'll show you, but I'll strain that then and get out the little cracklings, the little darker pieces and stuff, and I should be left with some nice, clean lard that I'll just keep in the fridge. Just I don't know if you have to, but it makes me feel better to keep it in the fridge. And then I can use that for all sorts of cooking. And it's, it is one of the healthy fats that I can use. I'm not supposed to be using any refined oils. The only oil that I'm supposed to be able to use is olive and avocado. And then I use coconut oil, but of course that's actually a solid at room temperature. So, okay, well I'm gonna keep cutting this up. Let you see what's happening, okay. From, uh, from everything I've been able to gather, I think that these pieces are cut up in really nice size. I had it almost done and my hand just couldn't handle it anymore, so my dear hubby finished helping me cut everything up. But they're pretty uniform. Um, I have a, a, the large cast iron here. I'm deliberately putting it on a small burner. Now I'm going to go ahead and add, for me, about a cup of water in here. Now, mm, half a cup might work. Anyway, that, that's actually going to work. It's supposed to be about a half a cup of water. And what that does is it helps it to start heating up without burning, but that water will just cook right off. It'll evaporate. So the secret to all of this is apparently to go as absolutely low a temperature as you possibly can. The, um, the, the lady who's done this a lot, that I watched her video, 
said that her crock pot is actually too warm on its lowest setting. So I have this big heavy cast iron on a small burner. I put it on a very low heat and you, you want it to just slowly melt and it, is, it can take hours, but slowly melt. I like that the cast iron should distribute heat evenly and I'll just kind of stir it every so often. The water will cook off. And what I want is to have all of the fat completely melted. And then when that happens, I'll strain it. And um, the stuff that strains through will be lard, and the stuff that's left behind will be cracklings. And they are apparently yummy. So, all righty, I'm going to get this going. So I've been keeping it on a low temperature. It's been probably an hour and a half. But um, now all the water has, has, you know, like gone off of it now. You know, it heated up all the water away. And it's starting to, to melt down into just the fat. And um, you don't want to burn it. If you want a really nice, delicate lard, you need to let it melt slowly. And you don't want to have any burned or overheated places because that just gives it a stronger flavor. So it is happening. Huh, pretty cool. I'm just kind of setting up like a, a thing on my phone every 10 minutes just to make sure it's still doing okay. But it's a very low heat. Cool. All right, some more time's gone by. I'm making sure it's not sticking, but it's just gently and slowly melting. This is doing exactly what they said it would. So I'll be straining that when it gets all melted. I'll show you what it looks like then. But um, yeah, it's, it smells really good, really gentle, mild. I don't know. <laughs> this is pretty cool. I have been letting this like slowly heat for quite a few hours. So even though every bit of it's not gone, I think I've really rendered out plenty of the lard. And any little pieces that are left, I'll either keep heating them and get more, or maybe I can just kind of fry those up. They're real nice bacony kind of bits. But what I have here is a nice clean piece, nice clean piece, <laughs> clean piece of what they call for cheesecloth. But this this is a like a, a kitchen towel that's very much like cheesecloth. So Anyway, I'm just going to start dipping this in and I'm going to just filter out all the little bits and then underneath I should have the lard. Um, I, it, it, for many years now, there's been this big thing about that, you know, fat is bad, animal fat is really bad. Um, they're discovering now that that's just not the case. And uh, especially when it's from an animal that's been raised very cleanly. Um, this is a very delicious and actually perfectly healthy form of fat. I think we run into more problems in our bodies with a lot of refined carbs or heavily processed fats. And so this just natural lard can put a good flavor into food and it's not, you know, it's just not that bad for you at all. In fact, it's one of the fats that on the AIP diet they recommend that I use. It's clean lard. Let's lift this up. Oh yeah, look at that lovely clear fat that's going down in there. Um, it depends on the animal that it's from, whether or not it's going to be like really white or a touch yellow. Also, it might be that I did something or I cooked it a little longer or something, but it seems to have a very mild smell, a uh, very mild uh, appearance. I think it's going to be really delicious. Oh, I'm going to keep, keep working on it until I can get, well, anyway, I'll just get this all in there and then I'll drain it all. So this is all learning experience. I am not at all trying to say I'm an expert because <laughs> I'm not, but uh, I'm excited to see how this all turns out. All right, I'll get this all poured in there and show you what I have when I'm all done. And by the way, I have a very lovely camera lady today. My granddaughter's filming for me because Bill's been working outside. All right, I'll be back. There we go. Okay. Wow, look at this lovely clear lard that I'm getting here. I'm just letting it kind of drain. Like I said, I probably should have melted, you know, rendered out a little bit more of the fat, but it was taking a long time and I just wanted to see what I could do here. These little bits are, I could, like I said, I could still keep rendering them or else I can um, just, you know, they'll fry up and make really nice, like with, with beans or something like that. It's just, you know. So it looks like I'm going to have some truly lovely clear lard here. Pretty cool. I'll, um, I'll show you what it looks like after it cools off a little bit. I'm going to put it in the fridge and uh, it should solidify. So, cool. 
Yeah, I'm a mess here, but I'll wash up. <laughs> okay. Tell me when you're ready. It's going. All right. Look at this lovely kind of a pale yellow lard I got here. Like I said, a lot of times they'll come out white, but not always. It can be a little bit of a, a pale yellow color. And then in here, those are the cracklins. You can fry them up and, oh, yum. Yeah, they're going to be good. So I'm going to cover this and put it in the fridge. And we'll see. I'm pretty excited. I just This is the same way that people have been making you know, fat for cooking and, and baking and everything for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Very clean, a good prepper skill, and um, apparently it's one of the healthier ways I can take, have some fat in my diet. All right, cool. Good morning. I am uh, wanting to show you how the lard came out after it's been sitting in the fridge. I had a feeling like maybe it was going to be fairly yellowish, which is okay. Sometimes uh, that can mean that um, it was the type of uh, fat from the pig or what kind of pig it was um, or I could have just processed it a touch too long but I'm actually really pleased now that it's had a chance to set here it is and it's 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 just pale 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 a touch of yellow in there but it just looks so clean and so good so um, I am going to fix something kind of fun here. I've learned to really appreciate plantains as kind of a nice treat on the AIP. Now I'm doing this very carefully. I do this a lot. I'm just running a little line right down the plantain. And then it's easy to peel it. That This one's more ripe and that makes it easier. Okay. So I will be slicing these into about quarter inches. And then um, I'm going to scoop out a little bit of my lard just to try it and see if I can make some chips here and then I'll mash up some avocado and we'll have a nice treat that's okay on my AIP. On my AIP. So let's see how this scoops. And then um, I'll be cooking them up. Oh, look at this. Can you see that? It's just, it's absolutely lovely. And so I'm just going to put some in my pan and cook up these plantains. And um, I'll show you the plate when I'm all done. But this makes me feel so amazing because this is the way that this, this cooking fat, you know, the, the fat that you can use for baking, cooking, and everything, this is the way that it's been done um, for probably thousands of years, if not centuries and centuries. So it really feels neat that I was able to do this and it turned out really well. Just takes patience. That's so cool. All right, I'm gonna get these um, plantains cooking. may seem weird but I'm gonna taste the tiniest little bit I'm hoping it's very very mild and it looks like it will be just the littlest bit the tiniest hint of a bacon flavor but of course no smokiness or anything because it's not smoked it's just the natural but very mild this is so cool. I tell you, Grandma sure used to make good pies out of them um, with lard. And um, not that I can eat a normal pie, but I might bake one for my guys. Just about hot enough. It'll get there. <laughs> it looks to me like that that one processing is going to make a pretty good amount. That should last me quite a while.
There has been such a push for so long about things that are bad for you and things that aren't. I remember when first they were saying, you know, that don't ever eat eggs unless you can somehow have fake eggs or something and always use margarine and all that kind of stuff. Well, all those trans fats in the margarine turned out to be really bad. And uh, now they're realizing, you know, it, it, I, you know, not being an expert, just, you know, people can do some research, but they're realizing that so much of what people struggle with is from, from the refined um, carbohydrates or from, from fats that have had weird stuff done to them. Um, the, you want stuff that's going to have more omega-6s than omega-3s. There's a lot of things involved in that. That's one of the reasons why it's good to have grass-fed um, meat because it has more omega-6s and the typical grain-fed meat tends to have more omega-3s. But anyway, um, this is just a very old way of being able to have something that you can cook in. And, um, you know, I think back to my grandparents who lived into their, you know, like just about 90, and just all the farm food that they just ate on a regular basis. And they are finally vindicating eggs that they're, you know, they're very good for you. And, um, so, anyway, I just don't think of words like lard as a four-letter word anymore. And, um, I'm, I'm seeing the benefit, um, with that, you know, what's happening with my skin and the arthritis. So, I'm trying to stick to what that highly trained PhD said in the book. And I'm also just trying to eat food as natural as I can possibly get it. And things like the plantains and the avocado, which avocado is so good for you, um, are just such a treat. Okay. These are really ripe, but they're going to be good. I'm really grateful that one of the things I'm encouraged to have is some avocado. because That is one of my favorite things in the whole world. I don't usually cook these quite that ripe. They sort of mushed, but I bet they're going to be delicious. If you're not sure what a plantain is, um, it seems like a banana, but it's very different when they're green, especially. They're very, very bitter, but they, they can be cooked into all sorts of great things. You can substitute them for a starch like potato in a soup, um, or, you know, there's all, all, all sorts of uses for them. And then they'll get riper, and they have kind of a kind of a banana apple-ish kind of a flavor, but I'm grateful it gives me something that's an occasional treat or that I can use, like when I made dinner the other night with a casserole, I use, I can use plantains, um, especially like the green ones, and, and cook them, and it gives a sort of a, well, you know, kind of a potato starch sort of a thing in it, so it's kind of nice. All right, well, I'm going to enjoy this. Let me, let me try a little tiny bite here. I know I need to get a fork, but this is not, not so hot anymore. There's nothing about my homemade lard that has overwhelmed the flavor. That little teeny hint that there's been bacon in the room, you know, but, um, no, that's nice. That's nice. I think I might even be able to bake with that and it wouldn't overwhelm whatever I'm putting it into, so. All right, well, we're going to have a little bit of plantain and some avocado, and um, thank you for letting me share with you about the process involved in me learning um, how to do this. Um, it took a long, long time at a low temperature, but you just want to watch it really carefully, and I'm very happy with what I ended up with, and I'm very happy with the little thing of cracklings, because those add nice flavor. I'm thinking about maybe like on a salad. Mm. So, all right. Something new I've learned, and um, so it's nice. It just makes me feel more independent and able to make things myself all the time. I keep teasing it. I'm going to turn myself into some kind of a little uh, farm wife here yet with just my garden. <clears throat> so, all right, thanks, guys. And listen, I love you. Um, live simple, live free, and I will see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> Be blessed. Be blessed.